Welcome to Slug Disco vlog number four. Blimey, has it really been four of these already? So this time round we'll mainly be dealing with Empires of the Undergrowth, although we do have a short section dealing with some events that we've been to with our other games uh, over the past few weeks. So we'll start with that. So recently Liam, one of our developers and directors and founders, and Dan P, our product marketing manager, went to America. Liam went to GDC uh, to uh, meet up with some of our new friends and a little bit more about that in just a moment. And both of them went to PAX East in Boston, along with Paul, who's the developer of Adapt, one of the games that Slug Disco publishes. So as you can see, the three of them had a great time showing off Adapt to the denizens of Boston and beyond. It's something that uh, we rarely get to do as uh, work from home developers is just watch people play and it's always great to and very valuable to interact with someone who's never played the game before and observe how they absorb the systems and the things that have been made for them uh, and it's something that we uh, we always find it is very valuable and worth doing and as the world opens up uh, we will of course be going to more events i think i've said that before but it's certainly uh, the truth we also had John, who's another of our Empire's devs, uh, go with Robert, who's the sole developer of Horticula, our most recent publishing project. And they went to showcase Horticula at WASD in London, and they were part of the Curious Indie Game Showcase. Uh, had lots of fun uh, drawing the game logo and bits and bobs on the wall behind the game, which looked like it was a giggle. I think John's a little too excited to be warming up that marker pen there. And according to the pair of them, it was great to meet plenty of you and show off what Horticula can do. There's plenty more to come on Horticula in the future as development continues on that wonderful project. Keep an eye on our socials and join our Discord, links down below, to find out when we're going to more of those events. Uh, there are more coming up this year as well. So the big business news is Empires of the Undergrowth has joined the portfolio of games published by Hooded Horse. Hooded Horse are a publisher who've been making some waves for the past few years in the indie uh, publishing scene, and we've struck a marketing deal with them, and they will be helping us get the word out about Empires of the Undergrowth. So if you look on Steam now, you may have noticed that Slug Disco are down alongside Hooded Horse as co-publishers of Empires. This is an arrangement that's been long coming. The IP remains ours, just to allay any fears there. Um, we have complete creative control. They do not own the project. Uh, we are just in a publishing uh, agreement with them, uh, essentially a marketing agreement. Uh, they will be bringing their more extensive business acumen and experience to the party. It can only be a great thing for the project. Uh, it means more eyes on the game. Hopefully it means more uh, community members, more feedback, which we always need, as I mentioned earlier. And we're very much looking forward to working alongside them. It's just worth noting that this only applies to Empires of the Undergrowth. The other games that fall under the Slug Disco banner will remain there. Anyone who read last month's newsletter will have seen that we're at a stage in development now where we're making sure that all of the game is up to scratch so that when we get to tier 5, everything will be at an acceptable standard and we'll be able to call the game done and release from early access. So apart from the free play updates that have been detailed elsewhere, plenty of art changes are being made. We'll go over some of those now. For the sake of geographical consistency, two creatures from the beach levels are being changed. Those are the Beach Tiger Beetle and the Beach Wolf Spider, both of which are currently American species, but it was always our intent to set the beach levels in coastal Europe. So those two species are being replaced with the Northern Dune Tiger Beetle and the Sand Bear Wolf Spider, respectively. The change is purely cosmetic, and those creatures will maintain their roles in those levels that they currently have. And of course, there's new voice lines to reflect the change as well. There is another creature roaming the sands tonight. Arctosa Parita, the Sand Bear Wolf Spider. To go along with those creature changes, Dan C, who is our environment artist, has been revamping the beach assets completely. There'll be more decorative flora and fauna knocking around, just to keep things interesting. And the idea here is to bring the environmental standards up to scratch with that set for tier 4. We've already, of course, updated the look for the rotting log to bring it up to modern times. Now, some more aesthetic and indeed quality of life changes coming involve the user interface. We've never been particularly happy with the level select dialog, for example, so that's getting some changes. Matt has been working on that and he's sent me some previews for this video. 
So there you go. Things look much cleaner now. Uh, everything's better laid out. Some fancy live rendered ants to go along with it as well. Why not? Other areas that are getting changes related to this are the tech tree menu and of course the free play menu, which will have many changes because of the large overhaul that's coming to that mode. We've also put time recently into the long awaited challenge mode for the tier four levels. Now, these of course are the fire ant levels and fire ants build bridges. It's vital, particularly on 4.2, for them to get their resources using the bridge building abilities that they have. However, if you activate challenge mode in the future, lurking in the crevices will be the six spotted fishing spider. And it's gonna be causing plenty of problems for fire ants trying to build bridges. So they'll have to be dealt with. We spoke about this creature quite a long time ago, uh, and indeed it made a very brief appearance in the Fire Ant trailer way back in uh, June of last year. John's creating a whole routine for it called the Bridge Harassment Manager, uh, which will direct um, uh, how annoying it will be to your ant. So uh, let's see how you cope with that. So everything that I've spoken about so far today is very likely coming in the next large update to Empires. However, this next feature is probably coming later because it's intended to be a post-campaign mode. Plenty of people have asked if we're going to be doing something like this. And yes, Empires of the Undergrowth will be getting a game plus mode once the campaign is finished. Uh, John has been doing plenty of work to get that into place recently. Even though it's important to note it's not coming just yet, I know plenty of you will be excited to know some details. So John gave me a bit of a lowdown about it. So the basic idea is once you've finished tier five, which is the future content that will complete the campaign, you'll be able to do another run with Game Plus Mode activated. So when you start a new Game Plus Mode, it'll be much like rehousing your colony is now at a couple of points in the campaign. Territory and resources will be lost and converted to Royal Jelly for upgrades. All rewards for winning a level will be reset, so you'll be able to do them again. And all unlockable species will be available from the start of the game, including the Bullet Ant, which will be a bonus species you get for completing the campaign, which can be unlocked with Royal Jelly. And if you've finished New Game Plus 1, uh, and you wanted to go even further, you could do New Game Plus 2, 3, etc. In general, a campaign level played in Game Plus mode will be harder. However, you'll be able to take your former Carrium upgrades into the campaign levels with you to help. For example, as you can see in this work in progress here, if you've chosen an upgrade for your Leafcutter Mages in the former Carrium, those upgrades will apply to the Leafcutters in the campaign mission as well. This also applies to minor improvements and Queen and Worker upgrades. So as things stand, here's a breakdown of how Game Plus will make the levels harder. All non-colony creatures will have a base star level increase. Now, star levels are a thing you see on some extra levels and in free play as well. When a creature, if you've got the appropriate UI turned on, has a little star next to it, you can see that it's a tougher creature. Some enemies will have an even higher star level, particularly in the underground parts of the level. Enemy ants in general will be a higher level when they're not part of an attackable colony. Fully fledged enemy colonies, for instance in 3-1 and 4-1, will be given a greater starting advantage, um, i.e. greater resources as they begin. Lots of other smaller factors will change as well, for instance uh, the amount of enemies in certain parts of the level. So of course the idea is you use the upgrades from your former carrium to overcome this increase in base difficulty. And as mentioned earlier, New Game Plus will be iterative and it, you'll be able to keep going with it and it'll get more difficult. So we are very much looking forward to seeing how far people can push it. <coughs> Worth saying again at this point that uh, remember, this update is probably going to be coming much closer to actual launch of Tier 5 and the, the finished game rather than coming in the next large update, which will include the other changes I've talked about in this vlog. And that's another vlog finished. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'll see you again in two months for the next one. So that will be June. Uh, have a great couple of months in the meantime. There'll be a newsletter at the start of May. Now scuttle off back to the undergrowth. So the idea is that um, so the idea is that upon finish campaign, a higher number ne ne a higher a higher number next to that star means a tougher creature. Fully fledged ele fully fledged en it. <laughs> Why can I not say this? It's worth re worth reiterating again that this is worth saying again at this point. And that is another vlog flinning.